um, hello friends our uh, next topic is linear vibrations uh, it's a very important topic not only for the vibra uh, exam point of view even in general sense as a mechanical student um, we should know uh, importance of vibration its analysis and its consequences why it's so important um, i would like to show some video this is a bridge takoma bridge narrow bridge was built on the takoma river in 1938 so that time they didn't consider vibrations and it was not so famous also so these vibrations are caused by the very strong winds and uh, it's um, you know uh, vibrating with a huge amplitude and they didn't consider damping process to nullify that amplitude because they they don't know vibration effects those in, in those days so finally what happened this amplitude became maximum and the totally bridge collapse so it happened you know within 4 months of the bridge construction we can see the total destruction so from the previous video we can see that vibration analysis is very much important for construction of any anything like whether it's a building or a bridge and especially in a mechanical point of view you should take any you know move machine or the instrument which is having a moving parts we need to consider vibration analysis because um, automatically moving parts will generate some vibrations and uh, if you don't know the effect of those vibrations on that instrument automatically after a certain period of time they they may fail so that's why it's very much important to uh, know the vibration analysis and generally which type of parts will vibrate any type of parts may vibrate which is having a mass and as well as a and as well as elasticity elasticity why elasticity if it is a very rigid then of course there is no point of moving at all and uh, if the point is you know movable to certain amount then automatically it should be having some more elasticity um, elasticity and uh, our uh, you know well known example is you know razor blade uh, so if you hold one end of razor blade and uh, give, if you give some a little you know bit of movement uh, at the other end then you can see a lot of vibrations you know? this is a bridge and uh, in the normal position it is like this but it is you know going like this and going like this that means it's go it's a moving from its mean position uh, to the top and and also to the bottom and um, the how how far it can move it's called as a amplitude amplitude so if you know the amplitude of this movement and uh, if you know the maximum allowable amplitude uh, that it can be moved then we can keep some damping so that uh, it never should uh, achieve this maximum amplitude maximum amplitude but uh, how to calculate this maximum amplitude and if it is a simple curve and if we, this curve is known then automatically we can calculate the amplitude but we don't know this curve how can you know this one how, how can you know this curve only if you know the nature of movement of this uh, bridge so what i'm trying to say is we need to first calculate the this curve equation if you know this curve equation of course automatically you can calculate the amplitude of this uh, curve so our uh, classic example this is a spring and mass system so the spring is having a stiffness k and with a mass m so whenever this uh, mass is moving in this direction and for example if you give an initial displacement let's say very small displacement x in this direction and you left the system you no know, as it is so what it does is because of this strain and because of this movement some strain energy will be produced in the spring so that strain energy act in the opposite direction of the motion so automatically it will pull pull the mass back so that it will again come back and again uh, because of the inertia it will move forward again so it will execute some motion like uh, for example if i take you know some 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 reference line like this so it will go like this and then it will go, come back like this and then again go like this and come back so about this reference line it is a moving uh, you know right side and left side repeatedly and uh, if you observe this is repeating this is repeating after a certain period of time so but we uh, we need to 
calculate which type of motion this system is executing that's what we need to find out now to calculate the amplitude so what we do is we try to correlate this motion with the some other motion i will take a circle like this so when m is at the maximum position that means here okay this is our distance x from here and this is let's say this is the starting point where m is at the maximum extreme position on the right side so this is here and uh, when m is here so i will mark a point here and when m reaches here i will mark a point corresponding to here and m reaches this point i will mark a point here and m reaches reaches and m come to here also because it also travel the same amount of distance equal distance on the left side of the reference point reference line this is a reference line na so it it will travel the same amount of distance uh, um, you know left of the reference point reference line also so if i mark this point here this is a point and this is the extreme and this is the extreme point corresponding to here so this is extreme point and again m start moving in this direction after coming back to here so again if you draw the same thing it will do like this at the middle of the reference point or, or at the reference point this is a point and this is so i can generalize this to and fro motion of the spring and mass system into a particle which is making a circular motion with a radius r where r is equal to the maximum distance maximum distance of the mass that that is traveling from the reference line so this is nothing but r and uh, that is nothing but uh, maximum amplitude maximum amplitude so this is uh, moving like this so here what i do is this is the uh, for example theta and um, this linear motion here is automatically translated into the bit rotational motion and if it is a theta and this is a rotating like this we can write uh, what we can write is a theta equal to omega into t so we can write like this and uh, this is a uh, moving along this uh, circle like this so here my main aim is to find out the motion executed by the mass so here what i do is Uh, at this position, for example, this is at a distance of x from this one. So, and uh, it is changing with the time. So, this can be write as written as x of t equal to r into cos theta, where this are again written as a cos into uh, cos of omega t, where omega is the uh, angular velocity with which this particle is rotating on the circle finally i have derived some equation that represents the movement of the mass because this 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 motion is equivalent to the motion of the spring mass system so this is what we derived but we don't know which type of motion it is so what i do is i will differentiate this one again here omega is a constant because it's a moving with the constant angular velocity so this is nothing but x this is nothing but x and uh, actually this is x dot x double dot means this is a acceleration of that particular or acceleration of the mass mass in the spring mass system so here acceleration acceleration is always acting towards the center actually we are we are um, measuring this x away from the center this is the center this is away from the center but acceleration is acting towards the center of uh, so always this particle when it is moving acceleration is always moving towards the center in this direction in this in this here in, at this instant it is acting in this direction if you go here again it's acting in this direction and if you go here also again it's acting here i mean if the particle is here again it's acting here so that means acceleration is always acting towards the center and one more thing is we can write the force in the system equal to m into x double dot these two are constant that means f is proportional to the here f is proportional to the x even in the simple harmonic motion also the same thing happen so when the under if you observe this particle is you know traveling in this direction 
so after one revolution it's again coming to the same position and uh, after you know completing one revolution it's again going in the same direction and again it's completing that means the cycle is completing repeating itself it's uh, always repeating we repeating in the sense the motion traversed by the particle is always same after uh, one complete cycle it's a repeating motion with uh, these two these two conditions the uh, what are those two conditions here force in the shm is proportional to the distance distance of the particle from the mean position and also the acceleration in the shm will always toward the uh, always acts toward the center so from these two we can conclude that um, vibration vibrating systems are executing shm motion so we derived these two equations and if you club these two equations it will become x double dot and uh, in place of r and cos omega t we can write uh, x so if you you know substitute x in this equation this automatically becomes omega square into x equal to 0 so this is the second order differential equation so if you solve this differential equation then we will get uh, the equation in the e equation of x ever vibrating system that we encounter so first of all we need to we need to derive this you know equation of motion into this form so once if you derive the form into this one that means that automatically represent the shm motion so once it's represent the shm motion we can find out the solution so whenever i say x that is uh, x in terms of t so x dot equal to and uh, from this diagram this uh, you know we are missing the uh, moving point from the reference point o so when but uh, here point is starting from uh, maximum position so that means we have to t equal to zero point at the maximum that means the x is a x max or amplitude is a very maximum or even in the uh, or if you want if you are confusing then uh, the same thing can be written as a r omega sin theta where theta equal to omega into t so and uh, we have already seen theta is nothing but this one so x dot is uh, we need x dot maximum so when is maximum when sin theta equal to when when sin theta equal to 1 so theta equal to pi by 2 means x uh, velocity is maximum at the mean position so x max x dot max max equal to r into omega at theta equal to pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 and uh, when uh, theta equal to 0 or 180 that means when uh, when the point is at the extreme position at the extreme position so x dot equal to 0 when uh, theta equal to 0 or 180 degree and uh, the same way acceleration so acceleration equal to so again this is a maximum this this magnitude we are talking about magnitude this is a maximum when theta equal to 0 or 180 that means ext extreme position so uh, at extreme position the, that is becoming maximum when theta equal to 0 or 180 degree <coughs> and the uh, acceleration is becoming zero when theta equal to pi by 2 zero at a theta equal to pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 so actually velocity is magnitude here uh, mag zero here and the velocity is a um, maximum at a mean position so what, uh, what does it physically represent see this um, particle this mass for example spring mass in um, this mass is you know going like this at extreme position the velocity is becoming zero and again it's coming back actually it's a uh, changing its direction that means here the change in velocity change in velocity is very high here so that is nothing but acceleration so whenever the change in velocity is high automatically acceleration become maximum so that's what here happening so velocity is becoming zero but the acceleration is becoming maximum and uh, at the mean position the velocity is reaching maximum for example if you take this first off first off here when the particle reaches the mean position velocity is max and even for the second half also the velocity is maximum at the mean position that means there is no change in you know velocity from the first part to second part 
So when there is no change in velocity, automatically acceleration becomes zero. So that's why acceleration zero here to pi by two or three pi by two.